Hi, welcome back to Future Fast. And once again, we have Manjari Upadhyay with us, and uh, she is the founder of uh, Gigi Visha Society. And uh, if you are here for the first time, you have missed the first part of our conversation where she shares her journey. Believe me, it's uh, very interesting and almost uh, near watching a Bollywood film. In fact, some parts of it are for sure. So uh, uh, it's. Uh, interesting and entertaining as well so please do go catch up on that and uh, in this part we are going to talk about uh, what keeps her busy and maybe we'll start with one but once again manjri welcome back to future fast thank you so much uh, what does jiji visha mean so jiji uh, visha means jeene ki aasha okay uh, thirst to remain alive to remain alive against all odds in uh, all the situations and not giving up that is jiji visha uh, is that a word uh, that's what it means or is that a combination of some words to suggest that meaning how jiji visha as a word has this meaning and ah, interpretation okay 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 hindi is actually a very rich language and uh, quite many of words are so unique they can explain a complete concept or thought process if they are interpreted well right yeah i i i agree most indian languages have that uh, thing sometimes for one word we need to actually write a full sentence or even a paragraph to explain it so so it looks like jivisha is one that so wonderful uh So, just curious, is this uh, you said Hindi word, but is that uh, what does the root go into? Because there are many, uh, many, uh, uh, many languages are there in the that region, right? Which are much older than Hindi itself. So, what is the root? I mean, where does this go? I mean, are you familiar with that? Yeah. So, um, in fact, the keeping the name Jiji Visha also carries a story. behind it mm-hmm. uh in fact firstly we need to know that uh, like this working as a volunteer and then sensitizing with organizations utilizing the law of knowledge and helping on other helping people and community on different other smaller and bigger roles not too big but then yes considerably fair so uh, this continued for quite many years of almost 5 to 6 years which we did just as volunteers as freelancers and then there was a group of friends which kept on uh, asking me if you are doing things so well if people are responding to your uh, queries they are sensitized and they are responding and the works are getting done so why not you do it in a more structured way and what is stopping you to register an organization now again here my uh, laziness comes in place i used to be a very carefree person <laughs> uh see volunteering is a different thing and running an organization is completely different volunteering requires uh, oh well on the lazy part i have uh, read some uh, article from us which said that uh, most successful people are lazy right oh. so, okay so okay. please continue okay so i mean it's a responsibility to run an organization and i was somewhere not really ready to get into that role um and also because ngos are very much like if a person who has evolved as a social worker if he or she has to register an organization it would be an ngo and then few experiences out of volunteering and everything uh, evolved as unpleasant ones because there were few organizations who I got associated and they were just lingering on their timeline just that they can complete 3 years and they can start having funding from government and otherwise so which was not at all my motivation the second part was i by the time i also got to know that, that ngos are mostly considered as money making factories converting black money into white money so obviously i did never want to become part of one such system people what people are doing um, bothers me lesser than what i am ending up doing and i never thought myself doing anything because i have already lived a very a very dramatic and very at times painful 
डिजास्टरस जर्नी फ्रस्टेटिंग जर्नी एंड नाउ ऑल आई वॉन्टेड इन लाइफ वॉज पीस लव एंड हार्मनी सो इट टुक मी क्वाइट मेनी लॉन्ग इयर्स टू इन फैक्ट मोर देन टू इयर्स टू डिसाइड वेदर वी आर रजिस्टरिंग एज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और नॉट बिकॉज द सेम सेट ऑफ फ्रेंड्स दे केप ऑन री स्टेटिंग दैट uh see people are doing let them do it it's not that amongst them all there are not good people existing so you start with the registration as an organization continue it for some time if it doesn't work then stop it there is always an option of stopping it and with this continuous support and belief of these wonderful people and souls in life we thought let's find it's fine let's register and then there was a question of uh, identifying a proper name so uh, most of the world identifies english very well and i also have learned english uh, purposely in life so uh, it felt uh, what to do what not most of the names they were appearing they were english names but some i was not getting them i was not connecting with them i'm a very i'm a kinesthetic person no very much feeling driven emotion motivation driven and in the like from out of nowhere you will find a uh, black like one one fine day i found it was february month of 2018 and i saw uh, pariksha pe charcha that is one uh, forum used by prime minister modi where he talked to the students board students board examination students giving them some tips how to do their studies how not to take a lot of stress and all so i was just sitting idle at home and put the turn the tv on and started watching the program where he was sharing one of his stories and it is completely a political now this is uh, as a general public and during the conversation he shared one of the instances that how the party bhartiya janta party how exactly it evolved it initially was a group of people which was known as jan sang and they probably contested for pan india for the first time it was in year 1970s the zone was 1970s in it is k beach ka and uh, in that election only there were two for candidates who actually could secure their security money rest everywhere even their security money was seized so which is said to be a very very pathetic situation as a political party but then they celebrated that uh, non seizure of their security money for those those two constituencies and they kept on working that in this Oh, era of monopoly they could at least save their security money at at least two constituencies they celebrated it they kept on working on things i mean obviously the political integrity is how they need to work and then in today's time it was 2018 so it was 300 seats almost so from the the journey from <clears throat> celebrating the a uh, non seizure of those two constituencies the security money to this uh, till this 300 seats win coming with full majority this journey it's not that it did not have its ups and downs it did not have the tough times but that feeling that jiji visha of never giving up <clears throat> that keeps the workers like me and everybody else motivated and alive that we could come to this place and space and whatever we are doing now so there i mean this is a big thing actually irrespective of the fact which party somebody belongs to or follows but then celebrating non seizure of two constituencies i think is a big thing people will will actually mourn on this no they have lost all the seats pan india they had got lot of everywhere they have been defeated but then those two places they became the matter of celebration and and then today whatever is there we know so somewhere it clicked ki then i searched the meaning of jiji visha then i was not very well aware what does it mean 
Oh, he mentioned the term Gigi Visha in the he talk. He mentioned the term Gigi Visha, yes. Ah, okay. The whole conversation was in Hindi. So ah. he mentioned this term. And you didn't know the meaning, so you had to look up? So it's not a colloquial term? So I came to, it's not very well uh, used. I have heard about it, but never okay. gave a thought that what does it really mean. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So then I searched and then, then it clicked. Then we have a friend. Uh, we have two friends, their husband, wife, Yogesh Verma and Shelby Verma. So their organization name is Thrive Me. So it's like thriving and Jijivisha, thriving to do well, thriving to survive, thriving to excel, to bring holisticness. Mm -hmm. So that's how Jijivisha was formed. So many times people are not being able to spell it right, but then it is fine. Yeah. I think they will ask and you can tell a good story. And sure. perhaps perhaps you could write to Prime Minister and say that you took that name from his talk. Oh, I think. that's another good idea. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, so what exactly do you do at DGV Share Society? Uh, good question. Again, so as I shared that uh, during those five, six years of uh, uh, me studying my uh, three years law course and then volunteering for different organizations like uh, Give Me Trees Trust, Prithvi Innovations, etc. And other than that, we also started working on sensitization work. So we used to sensitize the departments of government, like municipal corporation, uh, for building up with the parks that the children have. I feel that playing is oh, yeah. fundamental. That taekwondo yes, training you mentioned. Exactly. Okay. So I feel that playing is uh, one of the fundamental rights our kids have. And uh, unfortunately, we have uh, both strategically, we have deprived them of their fundamental right of playing. Uh, there's one more thought which goes in alignment that uh, during my childhood, uh, studying itself was a celebration. But then we were never allowed as girl child to play. At the max in the school, what we could do was skipping the rope or at times badminton. The whole field, if you go and uh, if like when you, we used to be there, the whole field used to filled with the boys only. Girls, I, I mean, I think it was told that girls are not supposed to go to that side. Yeah, we would be sitting at some stairs, some balconies, some here and there, nooks and corners, and we'll just keep gossiping. So sports was not a concept for girls there way back. And I always had this part in my mind that whenever I'll become a mother, I'll ensure that my children would play. They would play till the extent that it becomes a habit in their subconscious. And with that feeling only, I started introduce my first my daughter to Taekwondo. Uh, there were two, three conscious purposes and reasons behind it. One was keeping her away from the gadgets. Obviously, then keeping her healthy. And when she is playing, she started eating also well. Playing has its own benefits. And self-defense comes as a bonus. People send their kids for playing Taekwondo that they learn self-defense. For me, it was the last thing. First was her keeping her away from gadgets, cartoons. Then uh, health and then comes this thing. So, and in this process, I realized over a period of two, three, four years that uh, we keep saying Hello India, we keep saying Khelega Kudega India and this and that. But then where are the resources and infrastructure? So, uh, when this friend of mine, she started her own classes, people started playing a lot of nuisance. Achha, before that, nuisance was the later part. The previous part was the park where she started training as parents, when we used to go there, we did not have had a space to sit. Even uh, the pathways were not, they were damaged. So with this thought that the uh, if I'm coming here every day, bringing my kids for uh, they're learning something, it's a moral obligation upon me and us that we work for renovating or making, the, like constructing this park. And this sensitization happened, the municipal commissioners, the, so the benefit I got out of my law studies. Earlier, it was a big taboo in my mind that um, it was a jargon, no? how to talk to an IS officer, how to talk to a PCS officer, how to talk to officers as overall, police officers. And when I studied law, the section 21 of previous IPC, which has now been revoked, now it is Bharti Nyaya Sangita. 
that stated very clearly that uh, Article Twenty One talks about uh, government. Uh, sorry, uh, public servants. So all so the Article Ten Twenty One was IPC. IPC in IPC. Now, now it must be different, right? With BNS. It must be different. Yeah, we need to find out. I need to study okay. it. So I'm I'm just curious how easy or difficult has it been for most people who are practicing? I mean, you have family, full and friends. Uh, how are they finding this shift over from IPC to BNS? Ah, uh, see, most of the things are similar. They I mean, they not... don't have a choice, right? But they have to. No, but I believe it is also reduced, right? The number of things have been reduced. Almost thirty percent have been removed. That still we need to understand because there was a lot of uh, uh, sections. Of course, which... lot of junk was there. Yes. Uh, yes. From uh, British days, so. But yeah. uh, from a point of adoption, uh, how is uh, how, how are they coping? Because cases yeah. are on a daily, yeah, ongoing so thing. Right? Of, uh, government is conducting a lot of training programs. Like we were in 1090 here in uh, Lucknow day before yesterday. So that is a specialized cell for women and child security. It's named as Women and Child Security Organization, WCSO. So we found that they are being uh, trained on the new Bharti Nyaya Sangita. Even the judges are going through a lot of uh, trainings every day. They are going to uh, okay. one hour to two hours of training because it is mandatory for them to cope up with the thing. And obviously, for people, so I section think, numbers, everything has changed, right? Yes, yes, yes. For people, I don't think it is going to make much difference for common people. But yes, okay. for lawyers and jurists and police right. to, to ensure the law and order. Yeah, they have to file those things. They, so. For them, it is added. Uh, it is a burden, I would say. But then it was required to because there are a lot of laws, there are a lot of junk which was Correct, there. Yeah, yeah. And then they wanted to give that uh, Indianized. And name. what about your work suffers because of this? Because you also deal with. Uh, uh, you need to be communicating about yeah, it, so and because we are working on uh, posh laws, so which is uh, uh, like law related to women's safety, we would have to uh, certainly go through the. Laws and the sections which are there for the women's safety. Like earlier, it used to be three fifty four, three seventy six, three seventy five, three twenty seven. Now, how have they been placed? That we really need to look upon, because in general, it is not us, but it is a good to know. In fact, must to know information for us as an organization who is known for its work for women's safety at workplace. So we would have to work certainly upon it. We are yet to do that. Then comes, uh, yeah. What else was? Yes. So, I think we have missed upon something. Well, well, basically, sorry. Uh, uh, I I, I brought in the diversion. Yeah. What What exactly do you do? Yeah. So the sensitization thing, like uh, as I shared, that the parks renovation, roads uh, construction, the road. So you basically uh, sensitizing on the fundamental right. Of use yeah. of uh, public places yes. and infrastructure. Yes. How and, do you go about doing it? I mean, a uh, lot of times people kind of take it for granted, and at the same time, they don't have any mind share. It's mostly an afterthought. So there, my uh, knowledge of law and the guidance and mentoring of my teachers uh, come plays a strong, strong role. In fact, two of my teachers they are sitting judges now. One is placed in uh, Aligarh. And uh, one is there in Koshambi somewhere. Two of your students. My teachers. Teachers. Ah. They were younger to me. In age, they were younger to me. They were aspiring. Uh, oh yeah, you mentioned those. Parents, yeah. oh, okay, and they are both are sitting judges. Huh? Oh okay. yeah, and they were just not mere aspirants. They actually looked through the system or even law or even education with perspective of reform. They were strong believers of the fact that if the uh, soldiers on the borders in today's time, they are ensuring and they're ready to take bullets on their chest, they're, they're ready to uh, give that uh, ultimate sacrifice of their lives and their family members are living with that sacrifice. So we don't have to do that, but we can ensure that every day we can do at least one such thing, which is mm. actually a tribute to those, their sacrifices. Sure. Yeah, right. then the freedom fighters and their fight. I mean, if they would have thought that why should we fight? Uh, it will be let the next generation come. It is their job. But they have right. done it, you no, know, for us. I mean, 
few hundreds of them we know through name there are lakhs and lakhs and millions of them who are unsung heroes mm. so this this feeling as i share as i keep sharing but how, I, how do you approach uh, teaching where do you go who who's your uh, i mean uh, who's your customer so we don't have customers actually i mean we, uh, uh, yeah uh i mean in what exact sense you are asking no you what? are sensitizing i mean how do you approach i mean who do you pick i mean okay so what happened was uh, see it was a very gradual none none of uh, the things which we are doing today was planned uh, it kept on happening eventually and i completely right. accepted it uh, with the fact that it was probably god's calling the higher powers calling so planting happened sensitization happened by this time we were already quite acquainted with quite many of the government officials then in that same light we met one of the officers because we had adopted schools we were trying to send our volunteer teachers who were there in the government schools especially the schools where for five classes managing five classes there were just one teacher or maybe two teachers so we started sending our volunteer teachers in that light we used to meet the higher officers maybe the basic education officer then the chief development officer now people started having an acknowledgement for us that we are the people who are whatever level we are working on but we are trying to bring that change and through which we also got connected with the department of women and child welfare to be very 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 honest i never ever gave a thought in my mindset ki we will be ever working on women and child welfare this was one of the least liked department and uh, cause by personally by me because i had a notion people say something else they pretend to be something else and they are internally something else because i had lot of live examples okay. for that there is a gang called badi bindi gang and uh, i also had a what is that they call it badi bindi gang i mean the tikka this yeah bindi they will put a big bindi or the uh, for it i am pretending to be i don't know what messages were coming through them but actually to the the level of work the amount of work that has to happen on the ground that was not happening anywhere and there was lot of clumsiness in name of women empowerment in fact it it, it at times is converted into a lot of abuse to the in name of the cause okay okay this so is in lucknow it, it is across i mean oh, okay. the amount of okay. people we know yes so our initiation our connection with women and child welfare department actually happened to plant saplings we planted a group of uh, plants bunch of plants which was named as beti ka bagicha we did that plantation in one of the campuses government campuses which is called as sadar tehsil here and that was done uh, to celebrate the international girl child week so we did that here in lucknow and that's how we got associated the uh, uh by the time the they started knowing that we are working on the field okay there is one more very interesting part ki while the time we got registered and before that we were volunteers we have resources time interest money will work either of them we don't have we don't work but as an organization we cannot continue working like that no so there came a need of sustaining with the resources so we started identifying the ways and means how we can sustain of course there have been a, uh, a group of friends yeah that was my actually next question so how do you fund yeah. your activity yes so this was a uh, there was a search of maintaining the like sustaining our own selves so there had had been a group of few donors who started supporting financially but then we were wanting like asking for money even in terms of donations was also not a very light thing for us so we were looking for a part for a way or for few ways which can work for us in raising funds for sustaining so now because i had been a trainer throughout like in pharma industry so new basics of it obviously and eventually i kept on working on myself like uh, after st- completing my law i did my nlp practitioner program I got into lot of energy healings so it felt what if we can treat training as a fundraiser uh, one of my friend parveen akhtar who is a self defense trainer so we three four skill sets are a good uh, 
uh, they give you a confidence to so start. So when you started Jijisha, you have some co-founders as well. Yes, we are actually nine uh, members registered okay. together. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, how how did this nine people come together? It's all that voluntary voluntary efforts, and all of you were volunteers. And yes. You, uh, yes. Yes. You grouped up together. See, most of them were volunteers. A uh, few were very technically very sound. Like Pragya is one of the friends uh, where I'm sitting right now. We are on the second floor. She used to stay in on the first floor. We were neighbors, and she was technically very strong. And the very inception of the seed of uh, formation of Jiji Visha Society, I mean, an organization came through her because she worked with the skill development industry. She knew the nitty gritties of registration, how was it done, and everything. Even the website had been uh, done, logo had been done through her. So uh, few of them, like Parveen Akhtar ma'am and I, we were the most active people in the field. Fine. Pragya was the person who helped technically. Rest of the people they joined in goodwill. They because we said that this is how the concept is, and it would be great if we uh, become uh, like board members. So they agreed to be the board members, and that's how it started. Uh, in fact, we got the registrations like uh, applications from like Pan India across India. Two of them are from Bangalore also, but then the limitation of inviting them all the way from Bangalore or other parts of country to Lucknow for the board meetings. That that time I was uh, we did not have the vision that we can do it online also. Online. Yeah. So, uh, so we had to restrict ourselves only to nine members who were locals of UP and Lucknow. So this is how it was incepted. And then when came to fundraising, we felt that let us start experimenting trainings as our fundraisers, which sounded a bit uh, odd, tricky, and a few of them actually passed their judgments. And this was the time when I already had a gap of uh, seven years, like 2012, I left my organization when I where I was supposed to prepare PowerPoint presentations present things, uh, writing articles and write-ups. So it was already seven years and trust me, while uh, typing over the laptop or making a PowerPoint presentation, it was a tough job for me. I, my hands used to tremble. But then uh, again, few friends came like uh, uh, Shalini is one friend, Shalini uh, Pandey, who came up. She said, Ki, Didi, I'll uh, help you with the presentations. And that's how we started with our journey on uh, doing trainings. And we started well off. So uh, when uh, did this POSHA championing start? POSH Act. POSH Act training started actually in 2020. So what happened was when we started doing the training sessions, we were mostly posing on selling skills, soft skills, uh, and self-defense. But then uh, selling, I mean, training generally happens with the organizations who consider trading as a valuable asset or a value addition. So you started doing these trainings for generating funds. resources, money, yes. so that you can, okay. Yes, yes. And so, that continues. That still continues. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, while we were um, working on training and trying to approach people, that was a time we were also trying to find out when that, if there can be a subject or a, a, one such particular subject which is mandatory, which might be a compliance thing and which might help us uh, get connected with more organizations. We went, because when a subject is mandatory for everybody, you have to ha get it done uh, happily or sadly. You have to do it. You have no choice. So with this perspective, I got registered. I got myself certified with the... Uh, Posh laws got impaneled with the Ministry of Women and Child Welfare. And here also another set of interesting things happen. Here, like trainings on Posh laws, they came to my life as just another subject for raising funds. Fine. So we did two trainings back to back on Posh laws in Mar like February, March uh, 2020. And uh, third was aligned. And then there was COVID. So six months was complete break. We could survive. We could, I mean, we could pay the honorariums to our people only because there were few strong support people. I got my ITR filed for the first time, which got my money back. 
So they all cumulatively helped to be able to pay the whatever small big amount was there, the ordinance to the people. And after it was getting slightly better, we started again approaching the officers and the people for the post loss trainings, which used to create a big mess. People were not ready to listen about the subject, about the cause. Uh, most of, of the officers, I mean, of IS officers, stature, they used to say that this law is actually not required. Who is going to uh, get it implemented? And a lot of, either it was uh, adamancy, else it was ignorance, or else negligence, or it was mix of everything. But then, and it used to demotivate because your friend is going with you, she's partnering in that conversation and she's telling you, my God, why are you after this law? There are so many laws in India, who follows them? So it was a bit demotivating, but then I was very sure being here, the knowledge of law, being a law student probably makes difference. I was very sure that whatever has been written in the books of law, once it has been codified, today or tomorrow, sooner or later, or uh, happily or I mean, with uneasiness, one has to abide with it. Fine. And this belief kept us going. And uh, Ruchita Chaudhary, ma'am, she's an IPS officer. She was the first officer who listened to us. And because she was part of the moment of uh, this initiation of Koshtas, which was a very infamous Bhavri Devi case uh, that happened in 1992, she used to be a student in Rajasthan, in Jaipur University. She had been part of the protests, the rallies uh, during that time. We connected together and that was our first uh, jumbo, like big workshop for the police officers. Initially, we did it for her uh, department. That was crime against women. It's a, it's a separate department which deals with the uh, offenses happening with women, works for women's safety. So we initially did it for the, her own department and then gradually, we, uh, like every Wednesday, we used to call 10 thanas, their policemen and women, uh, like three to five people from every thana. We used to call them, we used to train them. So this is how all 40 thanas were, police stations were trained. And police on. paid you for that? No, it was uh, voluntary. Ah, okay. Yeah. So okay, this is, the, this is the uh, uh, activism part of it. And uh, yes, training part was, was not. This still was a uh, uh, reform. Uh, see, what happens is people will tell you that do this for marketing, do this for, I mean, for us, it was more so you, important. So you still go do this part, posh training for all the government offices and private entities and all that. Oh, yes. Now that we have, uh, I mean, we are being called as one of the brand leaders in posh trainings. Mm. We are paneled with the best of the organizations, be it government organization or private or corporates or NGOs as uh, external members. Our recent uh, impanelment has happened with Theo Broma, if you have heard about them. That's a bakery yeah. chain. Yeah, so they have impaneled us for their internal committee training and then a special consultation for uh, in case of any investigation arises, any case, in case any grievance is arising. So other than that, we are in panel with CRPF, one of the most celebrated, I mean, world's largest task force. Then PAC, you would have definitely heard about the Lucknow Police Commissionerate, Varanasi Police Commissionerate. And then when we come to private organizations, Sahara, you must be knowing definitely. Uh, so we are in panel with Sahara, we are in panel with Holiday Inn, the chain of hotels. Uh, Hotel Hilton Garden Inn. Then we have done with a group called Livana over here. I mean, I think more than hundreds of corporates we have already trained That's them upon. Hedelberg Cement, you must have heard of. Yes. Yeah. So, quite many of them. So, uh, right. so Could far, you we, just yeah. give me a one minute. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. So, you, you, you were talking about. Uh, uh, Posh training across uh, corporate. So that has been the mainstay of uh, uh, this effort. So, uh, yes. So, see, as I shared that initially, we started with the posh trainings, keeping them just as every other subject 
of training was there for raising funds. So the beginning of uh, post training was also same. Uh, however, when we started moving ahead in this journey, we started uh, talking to people, to officers, senior officers. And as I shared that we had uh, already got to know a lot of senior IS officers, IPS officers, young IS officers, PCS, PPS officers, I mean, the major contributors to Indian uh, democracy, the implementation partners, executives. And it used to be very surprising initially when the uh, these police personnel, these young girls, constables, uh, like darogas, they used to come to me because Rochita Chaudhary ma'am used to be very, very uh, sensitive and very responsible. And she knew that out of protocol, police has, I mean, government departments have a lot of protocols for the seniority and juniority for the position in hierarchy. So she ensured, she knew that in her presence, people might not be talking the truth. They might feel hesitant. So she used to the she used to leave the hall for some while that people can come to the come to me as a source person talking about their problems directly. And this started turning the table as I started finding a lot of police women, women working with police, they had been molested at times. Mm -hmm. They felt insecure. They had been made feel insecure. But were they even aware of this uh, prevention of sexual harassment? No, they were there not. is such a thing available they could actually go. No, they, they were, were not aware. No. So the basic purpose of Ruchita Ma'am taking me to uh, for these trainings was this only that even many of the facts are Lesser known to me when Manjari. So very unfortunate, very department which is supposed to protect such a thing for the citizens were themselves not aware of it. Yes, yes. So that's the irony. So uh, they used to come and share their problems and I used to feel, my God, the uniform, women in uniform are supposed to be the safest ones in the world. No, they are ensuring the law and order for the country, for the society. And what is this when they themselves are not feeling but protected? How, how did this... Uh, uh, thing start impacting is there any measure of uh, what happened after that they, they were made aware of such a thing uh, have you uh, also done a study on yeah. that yes 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 so yes we have been doing then it is enriching our experience um so from one of such trainings no uh, there was one case that arised and where one of the police constable she was deployed in vip duty in civil dress, the police has got a lot of lot kind of duties to perform. So she was part of that duty performing with that, and somebody clicked her picture, and some fellow female uh, colleague, she puts her picture on her status WhatsApp status. Right now, taking a screenshot from her WhatsApp status. One male constable puts it in a, in a group which was uh, hailing some uh, 25, 26 young constables and somebody and this, this man writes that let's start putting the slangs on this picture. It was all written in Hindi. And then a lot of uh, abusive slangs, a lot of fancy words, a lot of derogatory remarks. They started showing up floating. Now somehow, but why, why, why do that? I mean, what was the just a tendency? Just a tendency of making it's it's actually a tendency in psychology to make women feel lesser than uh, being a normal human being. I mean, that is it. I mean, uh -huh, obviously, harassing somebody based on their gender or sex. What else you want to achieve ultimately? That you are lesser a human, no. No, but why Why even do that? I mean, uh... They had a tendency, like uh, it, it was a routine for them. After this inquiry, like after getting into the inquiry of this case, we discovered that this was a routine for them. It was a habit. They used to do it every now and then. And this girl actually took a lot of uh, girts and uh, courage to take this ahead. So that was my, uh, that was the first. Uh, and just to understand, uh, they were doing it on this particular lady constable. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it is a gender thing, would they do it even to their uh, IPS officer who was the lady who initiated this? 
they would do something like that as well asti with the ips officer because hierarchy wise she is very very higher on position they, they would, would not do it, do it but okay. but but a female they IPS would do it to their peers and yes. anybody below yes yes not to somebody superior yes mostly no uh so even the senior of ips officers are not uh, spared off. okay they have been uh, introduced to it they have been subjected to it by their peers by the okay. male ips officers male colleagues ha- have that come to light in your exercise that has come to light okay okay yes so why and do you do you this? publish these reports Uh, in a public domain, or is there a forum where you actually publish report and make recommendations? Is there something that goes beyond this exercise? That we are yet to do, and when you say this, I am reminded of that uh, we should do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because unless yeah. Uh, unless uh, I mean, you seem to have done a sizable data. You have because True. Of the it is there. so uh, and also it is done across different segments so it perhaps uh, maybe uh, 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 maybe it it helps to give kind of uh, 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 what kind of uh, roles and academic background and the demography they come from and the functions uh, they and roles responsibilities and how they even understand uh, the aspects of it and implications of it i think uh, so that way i think your very training material need not be just for women even for men uh, uh, it becomes necessary right uh, because it's not a thing only uh, say in up or uh, only in uh, government offices because uh, i I've, i've seen this uh, in uh, large enterprises in multinational companies happening this and uh, Yes. Uh, so the study they have says actually very consistently try to avoid a confrontation. They have encouraged the person to resign. Yes. And uh, actually go in a manner where they are they they are encouraged to go and uh, I mean I'm talking about a uh, person who's charged with the harassment case, right? I mean who's yeah. indulged in an okay. activity is being encouraged okay. to. Uh, go and apply for another job and they have let that person go and encourage the lady who initiated such a complaint to withdraw the complaint not to pursue it yes. such things have also happened and at the same time i have also come across multiple cases where women have taken advantage of such a thing and also done that so how do you work a balance in this so in both of the cases uh, we keep reiterating that awareness is the key and when i say this i might be having my own moral uh, ways maybe because of notions because i'd been a person of training because i love talking to people and i have personally seen uh, changes coming through sensitizing people and talking to them and at the same time the law itself has mandated through its sections so section 19 c mandates all the employers to conduct the awareness workshops for the employees so that we call as general awareness workshops and then if any such case any grievance arises of act of sexual harassment so it ultimately has to go to the internal committee which is mandated by the law again through so its section 4 that every organization having more than 10 people working with it must constitute an internal committee so how would internal committee uh, deal with the case how would they do the inquiry part for that their capacity building is required and mm-hmm. this capacity build these capacity building programs too are mandated by the law mm-hmm. right so this because the law makers when a law is being made people who know law a little better than just going and practicing in the law court of law they would know whenever a law fresh law is being made it's not only the legislation who is part of it because legislative leaders how they are how intelligent i mean how good are they are there uh, this domain of making law we all know that some of these things can well be made mandatory at a academic level right uh, so that the moment they coming out passing out 
no matter what profession they choose True. they are familiar with some of these True. basic things i think so this we, would go a long way yes we work along with the colleges and we just wish we are working on this part too that this should be part of the campus to corporate curriculum mm hmm if any such organization academic uh, forum academic institution come to your uh, knowledge crew please do let us know we can work on this together and this has to initiate actually way beyond way before well i would the... actually urge you why don't you use this platform give a shout out to our listeners and audience who can reach out to you one which region you can operate with or also if you are ready to do it even remotely maybe you can give a shout out to anybody in that context so please use this oh, sure. and give a sure, shout out sure. sure so initially people should know what exactly posh laws are so it is actually prevention of sexual harassment of women at workplace now because it is a women centric law where the power of complaint filing a complaint is given solely to women many times our men colleagues peers they come under a notion and in a pressure so there i just do ask them that number 1 there had been certain situations and background that a law which has uh, which had to give power to women that they can exercise their safety against any sexual harassment at their workplaces and for that if you want to go in details you may just go through the case of bhavri devi bhavri devi ji was the person she was a social worker working for an ngo to to prevent the child marriages and because she stopped the child marriages of two of the sisters in which the elder one was 16 years old and the younger one was i'm sure you cannot imagine the age when we ask in our workshops people respond it might be 12 years 13 years 14 years 10 years the least they go till 5 years or 6 years and how does it, how does it make you feel when i share with you the whether the younger child was actually of 9 months she was not in years a 9 months child who barely would have learned how to walk or maybe just crawling she was subjected to marriage and because bhavri devi was working on prevention of child marriages because she knew what are the after effects of child marriages she tried stopping this marriage while firstly by taking the help of police but the police declined to help because these daughters belong to the sarpanch of the the leader of the gram pradhan of the village police did not dare to stop the marriage she uh, she found out another way of doing a mourning ceremony which is custom which is a custom uh, based practice in few parts few communities of rajasthan it's like when in our places when there, there's something pious happening people sing songs the rituals are there uh, uh, a lot of ringing of bells is there similarly when somebody passes away there in few communities of rajasthan people do mourning a lot of mourning the rudali Rodali, exactly Rodali. Yeah, so she tried stopping the marriage by doing Rodali that the whole uh, atmosphere will become unpious and it won't be marriage won't commence. But it is stopped for some while after she left for home because in Hindu rituals we find that everything is associated to sunrise all the rituals. So before just before the sunrise the the marriage was solemnized. And because Sarpanj felt that how dare. this lady from such a lower strata of society she could dare to uh, stop like bring a hindrance in the marriage of my daughters he himself along with his four goon friends went to her place and beaten till the blue and black the husband of the this lady and then once he was half dead they one after another five men gang rape bhavri devi fine so did bhavri devi do anything wrong she was just performing her duties what was what was told by her employer what was told by her organization to do she was just performing that so we create a society laws are actually the mirror image of we us as society the way we change a society laws also change so to ensure women safety at workplaces it took a long journey i mean she had lot of grit uske uh, like she she again when was to, that which year was that 1992 hmm. 
and imagine what happened afterwards after this gang rape had happened i, I mean it is actually beyond my imagination that how would have even stood up but then she still managed to again go to the police where she was not heard and then again she went to she knew because she is from she worked with an ngo she knew that the traces of rape will remain alive once she gets her medical checkup done the the medical checkup report will work as an evidence for her uh, to prove herself but then she was declined from there also and still she had work this is called jivisha the thriving she again she ultimately went and informed her employer and which was an ngo then they informed to other groups of ngos and they co created the pressure on police through which the complaint was written and it did not just stop here she was denied because she was declined from the medical checkup later on the police walas they told that you need to remove your skirt that we can utilize your skirt as proof that the gang rape had happened with you so in the middle of the night she had to leave her skirt there in the police station she had put the turban of her husband around her waist and in the middle of night she moves back home because she did not have any evidence of her this act of rape happening with so, her so uh, generally a uh, perception of posh uh, happening in a workplace uh, uh, of the uh, the posh case in a workplace our assumption is typically a typical office right uh, this yes. is this is a uh, sexual harassment happening in a workplace in a uh, uh, in a semi urban or a rural area anywhere uh, it, it is of a very different dimension very, so very different yeah so, so uh, cases are separately defined in the law okay everywhere where somebody is asking to get a job done and somebody is getting that job done it might be in return of remuneration it might be voluntary like we as an ngo we are having lot of interns working with us volunteers working with us we don't pay them any remuneration but because whatever they are working if they are planting a sapling they are collecting a seed they are doing some research work that is all they are been asked by jivisha society that's why they are doing hmm. so we are establishing a work relationship they are working at this workplace without any remuneration but they are working hmm. so everybody in every such situation where somebody is asking to get some job done and somebody is getting that job done this whole scenario will be considered as uh, uh, like under the compliance of posh act under the ambit of posh act even our households mm -hmm. they too are the workplaces for House our help uh, even part time yes our daily cooks. wages yeah yeah our cooks maids cleaners mopers or of them so yeah uh, as much as this job sounds so small the uh, the impact of it is so significant and in a very long run so uh, uh, are there people individuals entities who are doing something similar anywhere else or uh, globally that uh, that uh, you know they are their work inspired you uh, do you want to talk about anybody like that or any organization like that in this similar space so the most inspiring person for me in this journey is bhavani devi herself mm. so is she still around she is alive and, uh, and what does she do now she worked for quite long long time as a social worker she continued working for women rights and in 1992 this act of gang rape had happened and the law was made in 2013 so 21 years long journey mm -hmm. she never got justice all the five accused they were set free they were acquitted but she still continued the battle that the later generations me my women peers my superiors my juniors they all can avail it so she herself is the like uh, highest inspiration and uh, in fact all the sessions we do as i shared no earlier it was just another subject for raising funds but all flayed step by step it evolved as another cause very 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 close to us mm. 
every workshop we are doing, whether it is a general awareness workshop, whether it is IC sensitization, helping organization by making the POSH policies, helping them with annual report forming, uh, or else providing uh, external members, or, or else doing the train the trainer programs. Every step is actually paying a tribute to all. In such situations, okay. when there was are there, no... Are there any, uh, any uh, book documentaries made about her? Mm -hmm. There's a movie called Bavandar, which is ah, yes. made by Nandita oh, That's Ras. about her? Yes, that's about her. In that uh, movie, the name of the character is Samari Devi, so which is actually a depiction of Samari Devi. And almost 90% of the facts are same mm. as the real incidents. Yeah. Okay. okay. It was interviewed by once by Barkha Dutt, mm -hmm. which came in a lot of limelight. And uh, Abhi, this, uh, this 9th December, Posh Act, its inception has completed 10 years. So there was a big program conducted as Anvai there in Delhi. So where mm. she was invited as a chief guest. I would certainly okay. love to meet her once. I just want to touch her feet and take her blessings. That from where did she collect, receive that courage and that resilience that she kept on fighting for such long time, being so selfless. Wonderful. We'll uh, try to get those links. So look up, uh, follow, uh, and I think uh, uh, following you will be a, a good way to get uh, more information and uh, perhaps even more inspiring stories. And also, uh, uh, lastly, if you want to give a shout out for people to support your efforts, perhaps you should do it now. For oh, sure. Thank you so much for this offering. See, the thing is, when we talk about any subject which is gender centric, at times we become very closed. And in all of our uh, workshops, we ask for inclusion, we seek for inclusion because none of us as men or women, if you are associated, and I'm sure we all are associated with women, none of us are born through any man. Can any of the viewers say that they are born out of belly of their fathers? No, no, we all belong to the mothers. Many of us have sisters, if not direct sisters, we have cousins, we have female friends, wives and many more relations which are females and one concern especially in northern belt of india remains common that whenever a lady moves out from the home uh, till the time she is not back home the we, we have a tendency to keep checking on them their status whether they're safe or not right so if you are concerned about our women so it's just another subject matter that there are our colleagues at our workplaces. So we need that support, that inclusion from all the other genders too, that we can collectively create a society where grievances are no more existent. We become so self-aware and inclusive that we don't need a redressal mechanism. I know that might sound as a very ideal situation, but with our efforts, it can be attained. I mean, we are working in that field and I request you all to work that way and treat, I mean, just look at the look at the posh laws just as if your sister or your wife or your mother is going and working at some workplace because of this law, she would feel safe at her respective workplace. So it's good to honor the laws made by the government. And with women, I have a strong urge and request, which we do in, uh, offer in our training programs also, that whenever any law has been made, special law, when law talks about equality in India, constitution talks about equality, there are certain special provisions offered and awarded to the marginalized class of the society. And keeping women as women's safety uh, on a stake, when lawmakers have made this law, Somebody has fought a battle this long with so much of resilience like Gauri Devi did. So it was with a motive to bring positive and constructive changes and evolution in women's life. Like if mainstream life may, women, like this is the mainstream life and here are the women position. So with the help of this law, if they step by step by step move, till this level and the whole world stays in this equality and equity, enjoys equity. 
it's never meant to be the purpose that once we have reached here or as we meant now we have to move up and high and start rather take advantage of it to misuse it to do some other harm to others that should not be done yeah. because that stops ways for many women i yesterday was there on a mobile shop i remember them for last 18 years when i started my career in lucknow uh 18 years ago in their store out of 8 to 10 employees there used to be two to three women girls or women and for last 3 4 years they have stopped recruiting women there's and one reason? fear there's one fear of uh, their security so it's actually a shame on us it it raises a question mark upon us that we are not being able to ensure the safety of all as a society we have to think twice thrice and hundred times whether we should recruit women or not the another part is there are so many customers on a mobile shop lot many customers came no and of different startup so people will be coming and when they find women on the stalls on the counters their body language their language linguistics they change completely the slangs they offer and as as a business owner who which business owner would mind that his business should go on stay they they don't have this much of courage to fight for their uh, employees to the customers because they ultimately have to maintain their uh, their business and their figures So let so us. So the go. easy way is to avoid employing women so that they don't yes. have to get. Yes. So many of them, and and whenever suppose there's a male boss who had been falsely alleged about sexual harassment, would he ever in the lifetime employ no. any other woman? So one false complaint shuts, shatters the spirit of the law, and. it closes the possibilities for many women who are actually needing also. yes who are actually needing were who may not be wanting to work just out of passion it might be their dire need to support their family financially so let us be very judicious wise inclusive and ultimately uh, life is good when we are all safe happy and productive so that all i have to say thank you wonderful Thank you so much, and uh, to the audience and listeners once again, you heard. Uh, please do follow the links are right below, and do share this with everybody you think uh, should hear it because there's a lot of things which I think a lot of people should listen to this. So please do share it, and uh, do come back soon because we're going to have another conversation with her to get her perspective on future, and uh, also hopefully get some predictions from her. And uh, until then, enjoy the ride. Thank you so much. Thank you once again. Namaste. Thank you. 